Welcome to Voices of the Next Economy. Today with us we have Bob Haugen and Lynn Foster and they've been working with their with their company called uh, Mycorrhizal. I hope I haven't butchered that pronunciation. Um, they've been working on creating a next economy tool that I think is incredibly powerful. Uh, so day, today we're going to be exploring uh, what the tool does uh, but first I've got a couple of questions um, for both Bob and Lynn. And Lynn, I'm going to start with you actually. Um, are you concerned about the state of the world today? <laughs> uh, yeah, very concerned. Couldn't, couldn't be more concerned, I guess. Um, I think we are kind of in the last stages of capitalism and you can see everything, you know, you can see it eating itself all around us. Um, Things could go a lot of different directions. Things could, things could be really horrible and disastrous. Things could, uh, or we can uh, work really hard and uh, make some positive stuff happen and try to try to get this thing to go a good direction. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, an optimist. It's I think it's healthier to be that way anyway. And um, yes, totally. Well, thank you. Um, Next question is, do you think we can turn things around? Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know if it'll happen, but I, but I have lots of hope. Um, so, yeah, I think we can. Um, I think the, um, you know, this, this, the state of the world shows lots of seeds for what can happen in the future, you know, like we're in the age of networks and... Those that networks can can be used by people in all kinds of really good collaborative ways. Um, we can uh, this can kind of be our starting point for for a whole uh, a different system and a, and a better future. And, yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, you've talked a little bit already about the how, which is my next question. Like, how do we turn things around? Um, well, let's see. We could go into details, but <laughs> I don't know. Bob, try that one. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I agree with everything Lynn said to begin with. Uh, I think, okay, that a lot of things happen need to happen on a bunch of different levels. We have been working on the economic level. We've been trying to work with people that we think are doing something that is transformative, that will lead us into a better future economically. Uh, but there are a lot of other things that need to happen at the same time. Uh, it, and you know, I mean, we've been work, working. There's there's people on the ground that are doing this stuff. Like we've been working with Sensorica in Montreal, uh, and we got to give a big shout out to them and some other people that we've been working with at the same time. They're doing the hard work. We do software. We sit out here. We're, we're we we sit out here in this canyon in the woods and we do software. You know, so it's like it's it's a small part. That's a very small part of the whole picture, but it's a necessary part. Because all of this, because basically what we want to see happen is all of these things that people are doing starting to get internetworked and start connecting with each other more. And by internet, we, we mean like, like, like really operationally internet work so that they can trade resources with each other, so they can share income with each other. Uh, so it's like we're working with a group right around here. It's called the Mutual Aid Network, and they're trying to figure out how to cooperatively finance projects that they want to do. And I, I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. Uh, uh, there's Fair Co-op in Spain, you know, that's also trying to figure out how do we do this stuff economically? How do we make what we need to happen at work? And so we want to see all these people together connected into one internet work that starts to become a new uh, economic system. And that's just on the economic level. Then, you know, people have to be working on political levels and cultural levels and, and you know, there, you know, there's... Ecological um, levels. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, th th that's one of the things that, that strikes us all the time is that the economy is actually part of an e ecosystem, you know, and if, it, if you're not consciously part of an ecosystem, you're going to screw the ecosystem up. 
So you know, this uh, it's 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 you know it's it's like by trying to pull all this stuff together and get it all to working together, and that's sometimes difficult. But we think it is necessary, and we think people are getting that, and will happen. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm incredibly inspired by the movement all around the world that is looking to meet the challenges that we face uh, both economically and socially and environmentally. I guess that's three things. At, and I think that what we're seeing is the level of challenge is pushing us to create these solutions. So I'm absolutely inspired by the work that you guys have done and others. And so surfacing that and showing people what that means to them in their lives is really the purpose of, of getting the word out like this. So thank you so much for participating and also for doing the work. Um, thank you. Yes, it's my pleasure. Um, so let's jump into what you're working on now. Um, maybe you can share a little bit about, about the system. Uh, well, I would like to start out by saying that the system uh, is one of several projects that we're working on at the same time. So there's this there's this thing that we've gone through the last few days of trying to figure out, uh, you know, wh what do we call this? Okay, so so this has gone through a whole bunch of different names. We went through them all. We had uh, NRP, which stands for N Network Resource Planning. Okay, uh, which is sort of like ERP for v Open Value Networks. Uh, and, and but they don't that only makes sense to know people to know what. ERP is and which you know for, which stands for what again, Bob? Enterprise Enter, Enterprise Resource Planning. It is the type of system that is used by very large companies, and it's a huge system. And so is the software that we're creating. You know, but it's just it takes all of that stuff. I used to work on those systems, and so we we took everything that all of that stuff does and rethought it. You know, just just morphed it into something different for, for because it has to work differently. It can't work in that same way. You know, so so I mean, just just for one example, in in an open value network, people don't get assigned to tasks. People assign themselves to tasks, yeah. and so we have these things for okay, we're going to put a task out there in the system, and you can say, oh, okay, I, I'll work on that. You know, I'll work on that at some date. Okay, I'm already working on that. I did that already, <laughs> you know. Or wait, you're working on that. How about if I join you? You know, and so, and then they send these messages to whoever was working on it, say, oh, so, so on wants to join you, and oh, okay, good, you know, or. I can't work with him or, or something. I don't. I don't. You know. You know. So. 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 There, so. There's this whole. There's this whole different. It's very different from. Uh, you know. You're. You're coming in and you punch your clock and your manager says go do that. You know. So. 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 There's. It, it, that's just like the beginnings of all of the changes that are required to make everything work differently. Uh, so, so that's the, the, and that's the main thing we've been focusing on for the last three years. And I said we were working on this with Sensorica. Uh, uh, they are as responsible for this as we are. You know, yeah. I mean, this would not have happened without Sensorica. We, you know, we ran into to them, and they had this great idea that they, they're talking about value equations. We will democratically decide how to split up the income. And we're sitting there, wow, what a great idea. We could make that happen in software. So, so that was the beginning of this. And it's taken three years to get to that point. Um, so, but then at the same time, we're also working on this other software, which we worked on beforehand, which was uh, for um, regional economic ecosystems. And so like this started out with some people in Nova Scotia. And so it's a whole bunch of fishing boats. And these are small fishing boats and they do fish sustainable fishing. And they're getting overrun by trawlers that go out and dredge up the seabed and kill the fishing beds and go away. And, uh, you know, pretty soon, you know, like the cod were starting to come back. Pretty soon the cod will be gone again. So they're trying to work out a, a fishing boat 
cooperative, which they actually have an up, up and running. And so we did, we worked with them on analysis of the situation as it is now and how they could transform it into something that would work for them and, uh, and get their sustainable fish out and help them make a living because they're losing it. You know, they they in, in ter, you know you know they can't make a living anymore. So you're going to lose all the sustainable fishery, and uh, and uh, pretty soon you're going to lose all the fish. So right. so that so that was the thing. Like just to analyze that situation and figure out, okay, what can you do with this? How can we push it in this this other direction? Um, so so that that was a piece. So it it it, it operates on this other level. You know, like the 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 NRP software um, works on the operational and planning and executional level, and this stuff works on the anal ana analysis level. You know, what's going on, and that just, also, yeah. Yeah, just one more thing about the the fisheries. It was really interesting because if you look at the um, the resource flow, which is what this all of this stuff is about, um, with fish from Nova Scotia, you see, oh. They catch a bunch of fish in Nova Scotia. They ship it all to China. They fillet it in China, and they ship it back, and it shows up in your grocery store in Halifax, Nova Scotia. You know, it's yeah. and you can see this mapped out on the resource flow, and then you can say, well, oh, how could we do this better?" You know. So let me get clear: is this another iteration of the software that is uh, for for being able to do analysis in this way? Is this what you're saying? Both the NRP software and this other software use the same basic model. Right. Uh, and then we're re working on another project. So this is like the third arm of the thing is like trying to figure out, because there's all these other people that are working on various pieces of the puddle, puzzle. You know, it, we don't, our software doesn't do everything. And there's other people that are working on on um, th things like like marketplaces for, for uh, uh uh, uh, groups of, of collaborative people and you know there's all kinds of things going on so yeah. so in that respect we started a project that was a collaboration with uh, in spiral if you know in spiral they're, yeah. they're in New Zealand yeah. and they started this thing called the open apps ecosystem which is another thing so, what a great idea we want to be part of an open apps ecosystem so yeah. Where that evolved into is uh, uh, is what we're calling an open vocabulary project, which okay. is which is a voca it's common vocabularies and protocols for all these different pieces of software to be able to work together. And we think you know, so it's, yes. Sorry, I get yes. excited about interoperability. Yes. So it's like, yeah. So it's like, it's like the the principles are are that is you shouldn't have to use anybody's particular software. Uh, you shouldn't even have to use software. You should be able to do this from email. You know, you can, you, you know, from your from your little smartphone. You know, you should you you you, you and and ah, uh, that's all software. What? <laughs> that's yeah, all. I know. I know, I know. You're right. You're right. Yes, we don't even have smartphones. So what are we talking about? But anyway, but but any rate. So 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 it's 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 like in you know. So it'd be different human languages, different programming languages, and they should all be talked together. And so we've been working with a bunch of people that uh, think they actually know how to do that. And so we've been learning from them and working out the details. And uh, so we have. Uh, so, so th those are the three different levels of types of projects that we're working on. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, can we actually, I know that we set out a bit of an order of questions, but for now, I would love for us to get in, uh, into the history of this, of this software, uh, just so that we can get a sense of where it started and how it developed over time. Okay. Uh, this project probably I guess the starting point I would say uh, was in the 1990s um, I, I, I Lynn and I both come from old political and social upheavals in the 1960s and 1970s and so we were ready to believe that uh, something new is necessary and so as those things came through uh, uh, 
you know, one of the problems be, that, that that came up. Okay, so so okay, so let's say if we let's say let's say if we can if we could do all this stuff differently, how would we actually do it? How would we keep people? How would we feed people? How would we get work done? How would things actually happen? So I went to work in uh, manufacturing companies and eventually got became learned how to do programming, and so I started learning on. Uh, and I took jobs to learn how this stuff works. Uh, and I, I got this job from a little company called PCR. And, and I'm gonna, gonna this, this is a place that I'm gonna throw up a slide because I do want you to see this. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, give me a half a sec here. And We'll get there. Perfect. And history, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So, so here we go. Where's the here is the uh, here, okay, okay. So okay, so this is what a supply chain looks like, and this is what I was working in. You know, not all beer, you know, but just because I figured beer is sort of relatable. Um, so so anyway anyway, so I I had this Skunk Works project, uh, and it started in a little company called PCR, and uh, it, it, this was. Uh, the, the 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 goal of this project was initially to reinvent ERP systems. So then, uh, so then it killed PCR, and then 1987 Pansophic bought PCR, and then it killed Pansophic. So then P Computer Associate bought Pansophic, and so then 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 they spun it off because it was killing them too. So then it became Acacia Technologies. Okay, so that's when my Skunkwork project became an actual product. And so Acacia Technology also died, and then the project, the company that bought them also died, but I was not responsible for those. So here, here is the Skunkwork project developed a product called the Quick Response Engine, which actually has its own Wikipedia page, I find. I just looked it up. I had no idea that this was out there. So so that's the that's that was the that was the Skunk Works project, and that was where I learned all of the techniques. I have a question for you, Bob. When you yeah. say Skunk Works, Skunk Works killed those companies, what do you mean? Well, I'm He's totally kidding. exaggerating and lying. <laughs> <laughs> I claim credit for killing those guys. I didn't actually. They were killing themselves. But 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 it was but it was a, a, the Skunk Works project comes from someplace in the United States military where they would get a bunch of people together, sort of like, and give them all the resources they need and put them off in a different building and not bother them, and they would come up with something new. Okay. And so. So that that's a Skunk Works project, but this Skunk Works project actually did try to keep itself alive through all of those four companies, and uh, and and fi so finally, by, the work yeah, go ahead. Sorry, is it because the the work to develop it was so intensive that it took so many human resources to build out? Is that part of it? It was a very small project. It was just that it kept going through these companies. We would get a new manager, and the new manager would hate it. And then, then that company would die, and then we'd get a new, another new manager, and that number, manager would hate it. And so then the last company that it got bought for, there was a manager there, and he says, oh, give these people their heads. Let them do it. You know, and so okay, we'll do it. So we got this product out there. Then they were thrilled, but then we wanted to do more with it. So then, so then, then the the boss at that time says, no, 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 they're they're just troublemakers. So, so, so he says they can't do anything more, and so I quit. And so oh. then, yeah, so so then I did a startup, and that 
that the, the, to, to take that set of ideas and it was actually with one of my customers in the Skunk Works project and so that failed in the dot-com bust and then so it was another company I killed but 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 so so, so then eventually eventually I got to a point where I can actually retire I can I can start getting Social Security and uh, uh, so Lynn was going through some of the same kind of struggle at the same time and so we decided we let's downside our lives and we can get down to the point I can get down to the point where I can actually live off Social Security if I live cheaply and then I can do anything I want and so then we started looking around for projects that were out there because we still had this idea this whole this this stuff is coming down you know something's happening here you know this is the, the, all I can do anymore is just make money off of playing games with money you know so so oh um, so uh, um, so we ran into a, a bunch of different projects. You know, we did uh, a, a timber network. Uh, uh, we did a housing cooperative. We did a couple of it's got a few food networks. We started do we were doing food networks for a while, and then it got to the point because when we started doing it, nobody was nobody knew had, there were no there was no software for food networks, and then food hubs became sort of this hot prod thing and USDA was going to put money into it and everything like that so a whole bunch of people got into the food network food hub, food hub software business slightly different ideas but pretty much the same thing so we said okay you know let's work on an unsolved problem and so that's when we ran into Sensorica and we said, oh this is an unsolved problem this is a really interesting unsolved problem and that was the same time also we ran into the guys in Nova Scotia so all this stuff was floating and said so we were happy again and now the other unsolved problem is to get all of these different groups that are all around the world to be internetworked and working together and uh, become become the new become the next economy you know grow into it yes that's what I would say is that what I see that the problem that uh, what you guys have been working on is trying to solve is a way for people to be able to work together with out w without having necessarily a corporate model um, a traditional corporate model to deal with so that anyone like what I see from my I was able to intern as you know at uh, Sensorica this summer for six weeks and in that time it is amazing to see people from all over the world working together on projects and being able to get paid so the problem that we're looking to solve in in my mind is how do we uh, how do we work together how do we collaborate together how do we share resources together um, how do we do that in a way that gives people the agency and the ability to be able to participate in the way that makes sense for them um, and so yeah. when I see what it is that you guys have designed I just kind of freak out a little bit because I see the potential and it's incredibly powerful and it can give um, it can be it I think that it's an it's an economic emancipation Emancipatory. Yeah, so it has the ability to be able, if people, if it gets widely enough adopted and is able to be more readily utilized by communities, I think that it can be a game changer. So I guess that's that's just talking into that challenge piece and... and um, yeah, we. I mean, we hope so. We we hope that all of this contributes. You know, we think that, and Bob gave some of the history. We think that the model we have is really simple and really powerful, and can be used by different people in different ways. You know, you don't have to use our software. Um, it's all fine because we're trying to build another economy. We're not trying to make a software product. You know, exactly. Um, and we're lucky enough to not have to because we're living on social security. Um, <laughs> and uh, keeping the expenses down, but sorry, doing the work ahead. and being able to do the work, like what an amazing opportunity! Like not only yeah. for you guys to be able to work on what you want to work on, but for the rest of us that get to benefit from your work. Like that's uh, it's just for me. I absolutely value your work, so thank you. Um, I think it's worth emphasizing in this whole discussion that really, like. 
our work supports what people are doing on the ground. You know, we, we, we don't write software just out of the blue. We write software with people who are struggling through figuring out how this works, you know. Yes. And we're tooled for really fast development because, like, if you look at Sensorica, we probably, I'll bet you we threw away half of our web pages, you know. It wasn't right. And they're, they're kind of struggling along at the same time and, like, how... Do we on the ground in practice get this stuff to work? It's it's pretty easy to think about it in theory. It's a lot harder to say, you know, what's fair here? Yes. Well, what's fair and how we distribute our income? Yes. Um, you know, what is in the commons? What you know, how do people's contributions get valued? Uh, you know, there's there's tons of questions that that come on come to people on the ground. You know, we worked with, we're working with an herbal network around here, and the first year they decided they were going to do something kind of similar to Sensorica in the value equation land as soon as they, because they have people, they have farmers that grow the herbs, they have people that go harvest, um, they have a couple drawing rooms, and they have another, like, company that sells the stuff, and it's like, okay, well, let's, when it sells, let's just give everybody a percentage. This year they said, no, let's let's set up our network so everybody's like an independent node. You know, everybody has their own thing. When when the harvester harvests it, the drying room will buy it from the harvester. Yeah. You know, the, the company that sells will buy it from the drying. So, you know, we want the software and our model will support this to be become so flexible that anybody can kind of design their network however they want, you know, what, what are the nodes, how do they talk to each other, um, so yeah, but, but none of this, like, none of this happens without people just trying it out in practice, right? Yes, that's right, so absolutely, and as you have spoken of before, there's just no way that this would have happened without, without Sensorica creating a, a working model for this, and so getting back to the to the history and how this developed, um, how I understand it is that it started off as supply chain software and then was modified for networks. And then the the maybe you can share a little bit about um, about how that collaboration with Sensorica really made uh, made this robust, as well as uh, talking a little bit into um, the value equation and the importance of that. Uh, the, 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 the supply chain software was a previous thing back in the 1990s, but one of the things that I did learn from that was that the people who actually run the su supply chains are in a lot, of time, a lot of times really, really good at what they do, and uh, a lot of times the companies are not only irre irrelevant, they get in the way. So it's so so it's it's like the idea of a value network just instantly made sense to me. Um, you know, you know, you're not trying to have co companies, uh, uh, you know, try to bleed off more of the of the what's happening in the system for themselves. It's like a whole system; it all has to work together. So. Um, so the the before we did the Sensorica system, we also did a system for uh, a timber network around us, and also several food networks. And so this is like taking those things and putting them into taking those taking some of those techniques and reworking them and rethinking them and putting them into different. Uh, settings. So, like the other ones were cooperatives. Uh, uh, Sensorica is not a cooperative, but it has some of the same principles. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So then, when we started with Sensorica, it was like we started over again, but still taking some of those. So every time we've done this, we just we we start over. We take what you know. We're taking this problem. Here's what we've learned before. We can reuse some of the code. The model keeps evolving. The logic keeps evolving and takes in you know every every group that we've worked with. Uh, 
add something to the picture. So uh, we were working with Sensorica, uh, then we started doing some work with the Gorilla translators in Spain. Okay, they have a totally different set of problems, but they're also interested in a value equation, and they wanted to work differently. And so then the, the, the herbal network that Lynn was talking about also works differently. So now we're ta working with the mutual aid network, and we're not using any of our software at all there. You know, because we're not actually about the software, about trying to get this stuff to happen. So there we are only working on the open vocabulary. Okay. And tying some other pieces of software together and trying to get those people to work together with us, which is oh, sometimes I mean, fun. This stuff does come back around, though, like you mentioned the Gorilla Translators. So we developed a whole kind, new kind of recipe, which is, is how you kind of set out how how your network, uh, how you make stuff um, for the Gorilla Translators and Sensorica totally picked up on that and made it into something that worked for them. It's like a much more general recipe. We're in Sensorica initially and we're creating, making these things that come out of the manufacturing arena which is like I use six widgets and ten hours and I use this design so that person's going to get some credit and I made this other widget, right? Well, they were able to take what we had created for the Gorilla Translators and say, oh, I can define kind of a workflow, a general workflow with this kind of recipe. Um, so, you know, first I do, so I, you know, there's an ideation stage, there's a uh, um, design stage, then we do some prototyping. So it was sort of interesting, like all these, all these um, working with all these groups on the ground feeds back into each other, sort of. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so let's let's put some real clarity for anyone who may be watching. Um, so what it is that that you guys have created is a way for any resource to be tracked and uh, and people to collaborate together and for value to be surfaced agreements to be made on what is of value and then any revenue that's generated to be distributed amongst the network. Yeah, yes. so it you want to you want to go Bob or No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that there's it's kind of a two directional flow so the software keeps track of everything that goes into creation of something and maybe that goes back a long ways um, or maybe not uh, but you, you can see a whole chain of input process output uh, kinds of kinds of things or maybe there was an exchange maybe somebody had to buy something uh, to to put into the mix etc etc um, and then the reverse flow happens and the soft when you get some money in for something that you've created and the software tracks back against that same chain of uh, resources and figures out based on the value equation who gets what basically you know maybe you get so much per hour maybe you get you know whatever so yeah Bob's showing my little cartoon <laughs> Let's check it. you're on yeah do you wanna do you wanna just talk a little bit about the slides Bob so that it pops up on the screen So these are value flows. Yeah, yeah. I needed to. I needed to to mute. Okay. So so the uh, the uh, the first slide is the resource flow for creating a product. So you got money coming into. This is all real. With, with that Sensorica happened. Some, a bunch of people got together and purchased a 3D printer. Okay. So that. So then some some other people purchased 3D printing polymers, and then then somebody else designed a 3D printed part. And so all that goes together into making the 3D printed part along with somebody working on the part. So then we go to. This is how the income. So so now now. They, they get some money for this 3D printed part. Okay, so that analyzes that whole resource flow, and then uh, this guy gets some money. I've contributed by making the part. Uh, um, 
Uh, he says, I, I designed it. Uh, um, she says, I contributed by helping. And uh, he says, I got some extra for cleaning the lab. Uh, and by the way, I do want to say, what, where, whereas a whole lot of the stuff that we use comes from a uh, um, standard model for economic networks, uh, uh, Lynn designed and built the whole value equation. Yes, thank you, Lynn. So, and you've worked with, quite closely with, well, with, with on that. Yeah, w uh, with, with, uh, with this, with with this constant interaction be between her and TB of Sensorica, mostly. Wonderful. I mean, the one thing that I think is really important and exciting about this is that you're creating something for networks, and you have to be a part of a network uh, and work in collaboration to make it happen. So nothing is done on its own. And obviously the work that uh, Tibby did in collaboration was li with Lynn uh, was required um, to be able to make it happen. We have to work together. Oh, Acquire yeah. Well, he and huge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it was his idea in the first place. So Yeah. Yep. We just fit it into the model, which it fit really well, and there it was. Yes. Awesome. And it's incredibly powerful because uh, those are the pieces around, there's the human elements then around making those agreements of what is of value and that's another level of the, of the social aspect or the, um, yeah, what's an agreement? What element of, of yeah, what would you call that? Um, well, that's, that's all sort of part of this piece that is not really well defined yet, which... Uh, um, Kurt Leitner calls governance. Yes. You know, and has been thinking about quite a lot. And since Orga is trying to get deeper into that now and trying to figure out how all that stuff works, and that's a really hard part. Yes. Yeah. So the valuation, the value equation is part of the governance in some ways, but there's a lot more too. Yes, for sure. And I think that in the the way that the world is right now, both in governance and in how and what we value, there that is a part of the shift in paradigms that we're looking to uh, we're looking to help to foster with this kind of work, because you know you're creating something that is able to ascertain and actually create value, and what is the value of that? It's it's a bit of a question, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bit of a question and a question and a question. So. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, but I think it's very valuable for us to have those conversations and, you know, what it is that we're creating together is for the commons and for the common good. And so I think that um, this, it, it is very powerful. We don't know necessarily uh, where it's going all the time. We have to kind of just stay on the top of the wave and do our best to take the next step in development. And, and that's all, uh, it's this, this, I, I like to think of it as we're building the plane as we're flying the plane. Um, and that's happening with a lot of different movements and projects all over the world right now. So we're not alone. Um, so Very true. Maybe, okay. I, I just want to I, I show you one, one, more, one more picture here, if that's okay. Yes, please. Uh, this, is sort of like the, this is sort of like what we want to have happen. So these networks of networks, and they're all interconnected. Yes. Yeah. And that's not happening yet, but that can happen. And that's, that's sort of where we're trying to go with the, uh, with uh, oh, somewhat with the software, but more in the open vocabulary and protocols and that kind of stuff. That's fantastic. So I'd love to share with you guys, uh, as you, I think you know, I'm on the board of a small credit union here in Vancouver called CCEC. Yeah. And over the last uh, few years, and particularly in our last planning session just before I came to Montreal for the Next Edge um, this summer, I was, uh, we were really talking about how we can use our, we have a sister organization, it's a development society that is uh, there to be able to do stuff that a credit union wouldn't naturally do um, and can kind of foster community. As a, as a organization, we were, we were 
founded in the 70s from the self-help movement and our acronym stands for uh, Community Congress for Economic Change and so cool, the, wow. cool yeah. right yeah totally this, uh, this, this sounds a lot like the mutual aid network it yeah. does in Madison close to us well I would love to be able to share uh, some to, to connect to, or if you could help to connect with them, um, that would be amazing. Uh, well, because it that, is our like, that is our job to connect you. Yes. Um, so um, and yes, that uh, investment piece that you're talking about with them sounds, you know, really fantastic and something that I'd love to talk to uh, the credit union with. So. Uh, this this little sister organization, the CCEC Development Society, has some potential to be able to uh, bring some partners together with a pilot project. Uh, one of the things that we talked about in our planning is that we wanted to have a more robust member database and we wanted to be able to surface and leverage what our members do. Now these are all like leading lights in the movement for change in all kinds of different places like Vancouver Co-op Radio and the Folk Fest and Vancouver Rape Relief and um, uh, all, yeah, I'm, uh, all kinds of members that are doing powerful and important work in the community and so we as yeah so we have 270 groups, nonprofits and co-ops and their members. So our core membership are these kind of uh, social and environmental and um, economic justice groups. And so uh, one of the things that would be amazing is to have a bit of a consultation with you guys with our general manager and any other board members that might, might want to attend to be able to see how this uh, how the system you've been developing could be integrated in with uh, with a credit union because um, the the other piece around credit unions is that they are a democratic institution they are not a bank our member owners are uh, are the boss and so it's it's I think that it's I'm really passionate about a people-centered economy and I think that credit unions have a critical role to play in there and a project that really looks at leveraging the resources within community and networking them together that for me makes me jump up and down and freak out a little bit because I think that that can be a very po powerful model for change and help to help to have us create real things that can help our members help people to see how they can network their work together and also help to surface what people are doing in communities uh, so would be, we would yeah. we would be extremely happy to connect up on this sounds really awesome and then maybe we can get it to moving in our credit union around us yes oh, okay well I will definitely I want to be sharing these videos with people who would find this information relevant um, the I what I see needs to happen very similar to how you guys speak is that you need to connect people together um, and find ways for people to actually uh, you know how can we do this together uh, and so these aren't really these are, if lots of people want to watch them great but they're mainly about bringing players to the table that can see the point of what someone's doing and then move forward on next steps in other Google Hangouts so that it's a for the record exploration of what is possible um, so I'd love to set up another one of these with you and Ross. I was able to talk to him about it last night. Ross Gentleman is the general manager of uh, CCEC Credit Union. And so, yeah, I'd love to, to be able to set that up after our call. Excellent. Great. So um, I think that we've talked about um, pretty much everything that we've wanted to although not as directly or specifically as we talked about framing it is there any uh, just to close if you guys want to share what your hopes are for the future of uh, of this system Bob you're on uh, uh, uh oh okay 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 two things one is that picture that I showed you 
uh, and d we think that's doable. We think all these things that people are working on, uh, uh, and the, you know, like the credit union story that you're talking about. We got a credit union around us. They're not doing that kind of thing yet. We've actually talked to the president. He doesn't quite get it. Some of the people do, you know, but we can get them in that direction, I think. And there's a lot of people, you know. So there's a lot of people in a lot of areas, but but uh, uh, we would love to work with everything that you're doing in there. But it again. Is like we like to work with specific projects with specific people that we, you know where we can really really learn what they want to do. Eventually, we would like to make all this stuff to be more generalized, so it's like easy for everybody to use. But everybody's learning so much right now, and there's so much yet to be learned. Okay, so so okay, but what I want to have happen is I want to have the workers of Walmart and the workers of Amazon take over those companies and run them for their benefit and the benefit of the communities that they are around. And if they do that, Lynn and I will help them change their software to work that way. Awesome. Lynn. Uh, ditto. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. Uh, that one's a little, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so one thing that does say is we do want to and consider ourselves allied with, with like everybody in the 99% kind of. Um, yeah. You know, we don't want to work with this and that like alternative that isn't trying to truly serve people's needs, um, people's like actual needs. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, for, for example, yeah, the. Yeah, the mutual aid network that we talked about has a major project about social justice and trying to deal with the pr school to prison uh, uh, pipeline, you know, okay. that, that is affecting uh, so many uh, uh, mostly African American, sometimes Hispanic kids. Uh, and so we like, we like really respect that kind of thing. Uh, and and treasure it and want to see more people think about whole situations, whole social situations, whole eco ecological situations and uh, pull everything together and uh, get it going. Yeah, and one of the things that I really appreciate about the network approach and the space that you guys are playing in is that it's only through this sort of tapestry of, of us being able to look at these things from many different perspectives that we can get the robust solutions that we need. And so I, I so appreciate how you guys are, yes, let's work with specific projects, let's work with people through the whole ecosystem of, of problem, solution, and what needs to be done to be able to make it actually happen and meet those challenges as we come to them. Because the truth is, is that we have to make it up as we go along, and they have to respond to the to the challenges as they're arising. And so I'm so grateful, and just wanted to thank you both so much for taking the time um, today to meet and to share your work. And just from the bottom of my heart, I'm so grateful for all of the hours and hours of work and blood, sweat, and tears you put into this. I think it's very powerful. So thank you. Well, well, thank you. We, we really appreciate when somebody understands what we've done and are trying to do. And, and uh, uh, that, that's, that, that makes a lot of it worthwhile, really. Yeah, and we're pretty bad at uh, getting ourselves out there. So it's, it's nice to have, as you say, everybody is doing their part with their skill set. And, you know, the media thing is pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what we're going to do in the future. Okay, we're going to send you a bunch of links that we'll hope you will put into the description of this thing when it goes out on YouTube or whatever in case people want to uh, check into stuff. Great. Fantastic. We'll do that, and thank you so much. That's a thank wrap. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks,